Hey everybody, welcome to another Gritty Reader Try Parison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light, the Kobo Glow, and Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. As you notice, we're in a completely dark studio environment, and without further ado, let's illuminate the situation a little bit. Alright, we're going to start in the center here with the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light. All of these will be turned on to full capacity. We're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna go to the right next and do the Kobo glow. Ooh, look how bright that is! And let's just make sure that's all the way up. Yes, it is. Same with the simple touch. And now for the Kindle Paperwhite. So you can see all of these are at their maximum brightness and what comes across most evidently is the Kobo Glow over here is very bright. However, it is also the most bluest, or the, the bluest, not most bluest. So, the Kindle Paperwhite has the whitest look to it, which is really nice. It's like looking at a piece of paper in good daylight in the dark. The Barnes & Noble obviously is the clear, dimmest one here out of all of them. Uh, although they did do it first uh, with the glow light, they are not kind of up to snuff with the competition that's just been released within the past month or so. Yeah, I, I totally concur. As you can see here with the Nook Simple Touch, the light is actually emitting from the top. If you sort of uh, look at it on camera here, you can see that there are a number of LED lights built into the bezel that push light this way. Unlike tablets, it's actually uh, putting light, it's not putting light from the screen at you, it's putting light evenly distributed on the screen. Now this is a little bit of older technology. With uh, the Amazon Kindle, you can see that there's four and they're coming from the bottom, but the ones in the center are actually a little bit bigger than like the ones on the side. Uh, the Cobalt glows the exact same way as the Amazon, the light's emitting through the bottom. It's a little bit harder to actually see the LED but trust me they're there and you can almost see the light spilling out from the bottom on top of the screen so uh, Kobo Glow the clear winner in terms of how bright you could really kick it up the Kindle Paperwhite is a little bit uh, it's not as bright but I wouldn't exactly say it's dim like the simple touch reader it does give you the more uh, white balanced experience. You can see these two noticeably have a blue hue, whereas this is mainly white. And I think that they, Amazon is definitely on, a, on the right track. I would say so, yeah. This is what you want to see with an illuminated um, uh, e-reader. You want to see your book in a dark space but have it be illuminated. This one almost looks like they're, it's very evident of like a book light, of light splashing on the screen. It's blue, it, you, you really are aware that there's a light on. This one, as you're reading and you're involved in your book, you're not really going to notice that Oh, there's a light on. I didn't even realize. You're just it's just it's just illuminated, which is a really good touch. Yeah, paperweight obviously I think best overall practical application of uh, on-screen illumination, but it depends on your needs. Uh, if you want something that's more bright, I'd probably go with the Kobo. If you want something that is pretty multifaceted, probably the paperweight. I would say Barnes & Noble, from the looks of it, is almost abandoning their line of e-ink-based e-readers. They haven't really done anything since uh, the Simple Touch with Glow Light, um, which is almost a year old now. Let's check out the e-book experience. Um, traditional e-readers are not front lit, which means these are the only three on the market that have commercially released a product. Uh, in the past, if you've had an e-ink based e-reader, you've had to have a book light, you've had to have the lamp on or under the sheets with a flashlight like you're reading a book when you should be sleeping when you were five or six years old. So we're going to open up the same book on ev on each of these devices just to basically put them through their paces because obviously you're buying these to read books. So we have the same book on all three e-readers, same page, max brightness, this is, this is the result, this is what's happening. Um, obviously brightest, second brightest, dimmest, and in terms of just crisp text and the best contrast I would say, it's got to be the paper white. It's got the best black on white feel, this is a black on 
purple almost. This is a this is a gray on gray. I mean, the paperweight has it hands down with the initial first first time look. Speaking of like contrast and saturation, there's a lot of commonality factors between the Kobo Glow and the Paperwhite. Uh, they both have about the same resolution. The Paperwhite is 1024 by 768, whereas the Kobo Glow is 1024 by 758, and the Nook Simple Touch is uh, an outdated 600 by 800. So uh, pictures, as we're going to demonstrate with complex PDFs, often look very good on the Kobo and the Amazon Kindle Paperweight. Um, what can we do between these two devices? Let's show the viewers how uh, augmenting your reading experience, what, what types of things that you can do. All right, on the Kindle, you tap at the top, the Barnes & Noble, you tap in the middle, and the Kobo, you tap at the bottom to open up all this uh, kind of font Almost augmentations. Like yeah, it is. It's a, It's definitely a, in each each place. Each reader has their own place you tap. So um, let's bring up the fonts. All right. So you see with the Barnes & Noble and the Kindle, you have uh, different blocks of letters you can choose to update your text live. Whereas the Kobo, you have a slider bar, which is a lot more... Um, you have a lot more settings with a slider bar than you do with just eight or nine different uh, font blocks. So uh, you get a lot more customization out of the Kobo. Uh, line spacing and uh, margins don't always work on side-loaded content, so beware of that. Whereas uh, margins and line spacing on both the Barnes & Noble and the Amazon, they always work. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting that uh, Kobo traditionally has been very side load friendly. You could load in your own dictionary, or sorry, you can like load in your own fonts. There's a lot of things that you could like load in. Uh, of course, you can load in your own dictionaries. There's options for that. But the fact that you, you can't really generally edit line space and margins on the Kobo Glow, but you can do it on the other two, kind of weird. It is kind of weird and I uh, don't really have a reason for that. Um, Kobo actually has advanced as well so you get a before and after look of what you can expect after you're done changing your settings. Yeah, I mean, if you have the brightness setting on max, you might want the text to have more weight and more sharpness, which is basically like higher saturation. Uh, the text would be like darker, so um, you could pretty well optimize the text based on how bright you have the screen. Uh, the Kindle does have uh, text uh, features to basically up the contrast, but it is in the settings menu, so it's a uh, it's a little bit harder to actually get there. Exactly. So uh, let's look at page turn speeds. And we're going to try to do these all at the same time here. So you can see the Paperwhite kind of does get there faster. The Kobo would probably be in a close second. And the Nook a distant third. And the Nook is just kind of creeping along there. <laughs> I mean, they all they all t pay, turn page. I mean, it's not like you're waiting forever to this for this to go by, but it's very obvious that it is taking much longer than its competition. So all you can see here is a uh, highlight. So on all the readers, what you want to do is just long press, and they all have their own ways of displaying what you can long press there. Let's get a word going. So this, uh, both the Kobo and the Kindle immediately give you a definition. And from there, you can uh, share on Facebook. Uh, same with the um, Kindle here. You can share on Facebook. You can add notes and uh, look up in dictionaries. We're not going to show you every single one of these because uh, we have showed you in several other videos in the past. And you can just play around with these as you go along. Yeah, if you want to see like full options, check out the independent reviews that we've done on each one where we've basically showed it. The one thing I do like about... Uh, the Kindle Paperwhite is uh, the report content error feature. This is mainly applicable to self-published books. If uh, you're seeing brutal formatting or if there's like glaring mistakes, you might want to check that out. But I also do like the instant translation services. And this is something that a lot of other ones don't do. We have it from English to Chinese, but if you want, we can change it from English to French. 
So you can do this on the fly, not only with words, but with any text you highlight. So you can highlight one word or you could highlight an entire paragraph. And I, I really dig it. I think that this is like a cool, unique feature that is, you know, a lot of people just aren't doing it. Yeah, I mean, pretty quickly, as you saw there, as, uh, before Michael finished his sentence, I've already translated a, a third of the page into Chinese. So, um, definitely really good feature. Uh, there's no such features on these two in terms of translations, but they, as we showed you here, they both do dictionaries. Uh, you, can, you can add notes and highlights and, and look up on uh, dictionaries on the Barnes & Noble as well. Um, you can, you can uh, highlight full sections of text as well by grabbing the little sliders there so they all do the same thing they just have a different approach to getting there yeah I mean you can see that the, the Kobo Glow and Amazon have a lot of similarities when you highlight a word dictionary pops up with a nook that you have to go through an extra step to get it I do enjoy with the, the Kobo these little kind of slider bars here. It makes it a little bit more intuitive on where exactly on the screen you're supposed to grab. I would probably say the Paperwhite highlights and actually does text a little bit faster because the Kobo relies on these. You can see that I'm dragging it up but it, and it isn't necessarily highlighting anything. It takes a few seconds. You can see the Nook too, super quick in that, resp in that respect. Yeah, yeah. It seems that um, because they're adding an underline plus they're using these little animations for these dragger bars, it's, it's a lot slowing it down to actually utilize that feature properly. Hey, we showed you dictionaries on the Kindle uh, Paperweight. There's actually a number of dictionaries on uh, the Kobo as well um, once we sort of go to the home uh, in the settings menu that there, there is uh, a number of dictionaries based on where you're at in the world you can't do like correlations or anything like that uh, you know but you do have some options here for like reading settings and things like that most of these e-readers do um, I did want to show you 13 dictionaries installed. You can see here that there's a number of dictionaries. So basically the same ones that Amazon had from its drop-down selection and you have like a few others. You can save space by deleting them but you can also add them as well. So I just wanted to show that since we talked a little bit about dictionaries. Complex PDF files, folks. This is something that many people who are students, uh, academics, who uh, love graphic novels, manga, anime, or maybe they just like you know, things like uh, game ma game manuals by uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Palladium Rifts, GURPS, Cyberpunk, you know, all that jazz. So we're going to take a look at uh, a very large 100 meg uh, Dungeons and Masters guide and see what types of uh, options and how fast these load up on each unit. All right. You can open the Dungeons Monster Manual on all three of these. Oh, Kobo took a little while to get there. Now... Once again, Kobo Glow, pretty purple. Uh, you can turn that down, but you know it's still still really blue, and the coloration is just a little bit off. But it's definitely the brightest and easiest to see. So let's maybe take it down so it kind of. There you go. A little bit. I think that looks a little bit yeah. more whiter. Um, Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. If you need to, uh, we'll just kind of go one by one here. Amazon Kindle Paperwhite, if you need to explore any portion of the page, you can see it's pretty unreadable. All you have to do, simply pinch and zoom, and in a matter of seconds, renders, fully readable, um, full scroll capabilities to scroll over to pictures. You can see how it renders right away. Uh, let's just zoom out a little bit. Very quick, very easy, very, very uh, practical. Now for the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch, a little bit different. You can not you can turn pages, no problem. Now you can't double tap to get into anything because they're just bring, you're bringing up the bar at the bottom. You can't pinch and zoom because it doesn't have that. It just kind of gets confused and thinks you're turning pages twice. Now what you'd have to do is go to text. And as you up the text, it pre-reflows and zooms in at the same time so you can see what happens there. I mean it does it well but it's not quite as good as the paper white where you can just oh I want to go see that zoom in scroll up there 
and away you go. It's a little bit more difficult and as you turn pages you're scrolling down this column as you can see here. So not quite as easy to navigate around as the paper white is by far. Kobo, a little bit different as well. Can't pinch and zoom, once again, thinks you're turning pages randomly. So what you want to do is click at the bottom, click the magnifying glass, choose a level of zoom, exit out of that zoom level, then you can move around. And I think it moves around a little bit better than, say, the Kindle Paperwhite. However, you can't pinch and zoom to get out of this or zoom in anymore. You have to go back to the zoom. But there is a little mini-map showing you where you are on the page, which is actually pretty convenient. So, um, you know, it's they all have their different approach to changing your PDF experience. The, the worst one by far is the Barnes & Noble. You can't really do anything except reflow it. And when you do, you're not really sure where you are, what you're reading, you can't really see the pictures that well. It, it's it's kind of sloppy. Okay, when it comes to PDF files, your obvious choices, I think, are between the Kobo Glow and uh, the Kindle Paperwhite. Uh, the Kindle Paperwhite has the advantage that you can pinch and zoom on text. Uh, Kobo, um, it takes a little bit more to get there, but once you initiate options, I think scrolling around is good. I do like this left hand uh, corner picture there. As you can see when we kind of zoom in on a picture uh, the high resolution really um, you know really becomes quite evident. Another advantage Kobo has is that it reads CBR and CBZ files, which are very popular for comics, graphic novels, and manga, whereas the other two readers do not read those formats. So if you're heavily invested into graphic novels and comics, I think Kobo is probably the way to go. If you're more into just academic PDFs, I'd probably go with the, the Kindle Paperwhite, just because um, I do like the pinching and zooming feature. It's a little bit more intuitive and more robust. Uh, final thoughts, Pete. Pitting these all together, I mean, they are glow light readers, first and foremost. That's what they're advertised as. So what I'm just going to say is that the Kindle Paperwhite does it the best. It is the whitest. It's the black on whitest. has the best contrast. It, it illuminates the page properly. When you utilize the, uh, the Kobo at full capacity, like all of these are, uh, you're seeing too much discoloration. It's getting a little bit purple. Although it is completely readable, the colors get a little bit off. So... Um, Given that, I would say the Kobo is the brightest, the um, Kindle Paperwhite has the best contrast and overall glow experience, um, the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch is a little bit dim. But in terms of the reading experience overall, because that's what an e-reader is for, overall the Paperwhite has to, I, I'd have to give it to the Paperwhite. Yeah, I would say probably the Paperwhite is the best example of a company that sells both hardware and software to provide a, a very unique experience that a lot of its competition simply isn't doing. Um, it's bookstore layout, I like it way better than any of the others. Uh, the way that it does, like when you actually click on a book and, and look at everything, I really dig that. Um, I find that the PDF's a little bit more functional, and I, I would just say that it does everything a little bit better. So I would probably say if you're buying an e-reader for the first time, or you're thinking about upgrading to an e-reader that has a front lit illuminated screen, by this triparison here, I think the clear winner is probably Amazon, but all of these e-readers, no matter if you buy books straight on these devices, you can uh, you know, have your books synced in the cloud, read them on your iPad, read them on your Android phone. Every, every company that does both hardware and software really has a, a great ecosystem. So you're not locked into these devices, but you can pick up others and take your content. But for a triparison, I uh, will leave it up to you guys to make the final call on which uh, which one you like better in, in brightness and ecosystem and form and function. So for a triparison on the Kindle Paperwhite, the Note Simple Touch with Glow Light, and the Kobo Glow for goodyreader.com. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.